Hey guys, my name is Stan Brickbanko. Welcome to another Critique episode of Proco. Today we're going to be doing adductors. There's a good amount of submissions. If you don't know what the assignment was, that means you probably should stop watching this video and go back to the main lesson, watch the lesson, figure out what the assignment was, and then do the assignment, and then watch the assignment example videos, and then do the assignment again, and then you'd be ready for this video. <laughs> so lots of prerequisites here. Or you could just ignore everything I just said and watch this video. Austin has a comment as she said, I feel as though I understand the basic forms of the adductor, but the process of detailing in the muscles always confuses me looking for critique. I agree, you, it looks like you understand most of the forms, and if by detailing the muscles you're referring to shading and kind of you know, getting a three-dimensional look to the forms, then it's kind of outside the scope of this critique because shading is just a whole separate thing. I have many lessons on shading. If you just go to YouTube, type in Proco shading or, or lighting and form, that sort of thing, you'll find a bunch of videos. But generally, I feel like your, your shading problems are kind of just sloppy, you're, you're throwing in a lot of tone, like, you know, look at this area, it's just four lines. Look at this, a bunch of squiggles. And you're not considering the edges between the light and the shadow. And the edges of that transition are really, really important in showing the three-dimensional form. For example, in this adductor in here, you, you have this part indicated as shadow and this part as light. And that's good, it's at the beginning of showing form you have basically two planes indicated right now you, and with a kind of a hard edge with like a wobble to it. But you do have kind of this box right now. So it does appear three-dimensional because you have a step up as shadow and then a step, step over to the left in light. But if you're talking about detailing, you're going to have to go further than just a simple two-plane uh, indication. You have to start adding more Gra you know, gradual turns between those side planes, and that requires edges. That's the that's the my big overall uh, critique for you regarding shading. But I feel like you you do understand the forms of the adductors, so uh, won't say much there. One thing I am seeing it's not the adductors; it's more of the TFL again. I think a lot of people are actually making this mistake. Probably going to be repeating this one a lot. But in here, it looks like you're completely missing the TFL. And then in, in here on this side, it looks like you're continuing the, the kind of, a, I guess it's more of just a quad group. You're combining the rectus femoris and the vastus lateralis into one group. And then you actually combined it with the TFL as well. And you kind of just created like this worm, worm-like shape. What would actually happen there is the quads would go in and dive into this tunnel that's created by the TFL and the sartorius. And this whole area is kind of a, a flat front plane. And I just don't feel like you really indicated that very well. And I, same thing on this other side. You're completely missing the TFL. The sartorius in, isn't indicated very well. You're missing that entire front plane, that triangular front plane up, up in here. And you're just showing quads going all the way up to the iliac crest. That's a very, very common issue. Most people don't understand that the, the quads don't go all the way up. That's why I keep, I'm, I probably repeated this a, a bunch of times in the main lessons and I'm gonna continue repeating it. And you'll hear me say it in the quad lesson as well. Because it, it is an important thing that people consistently do wrong. Okay, so here's Priscilla's drawings and it looks more like you're drawing a tattoo on top of the leg cylinder rather than thinking about the form of the sartorius. So like, look at this one in here. Like, that doesn't actually show any form. This whole thing, in, this whole part right here, that is part of the sartorius. So you should have curved all that in, like so. And then in here, you're showing a kind of a flat, rectangular stripe. Really what happens when something twists, is you see it when it's facing you, and then as it's twisting around and to the back, you're going to see less and less of it. It gets thinner, right? Like imagine a ribbon. It starts out like this facing us and we see its face. As it twists, 
it's going to get thinner until all we see is a thin side plane of the ribbon. And it kind of rotates, and now we see the other, the back face of that ribbon. And that's kind of what the uh, sartorius is doing. This part right here is all hidden behind the, this quad muscle. But we see this part in here, and as it twists, it goes to a point. And you need to think about that when you're drawing this, and not just draw a rectangle. Here you kind of did it, but I think maybe the sloppiness kind of helped. I think really you were trying to just draw this. You're drawing this sort of shape everywhere. So it's a tattoo, and it's not a form that twists and turns, and it has a thick bundle at the knee. Um, and at the top, combined with the tensor fascia lata, they create a triangular front plane. And these are forms. They're not tattoos on top of a cylinder. So yeah, that's, that's a big one. So that's it. And if you guys want to watch all of the critiques for adductors, and really all the muscle groups and, and watch the full lessons of all the muscles and get more example videos and ebooks and 3D models. All that's in the full premium course at proco.com slash anatomy. All right, guys, thank you for watching.